Hello, and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. Today, I want to tell you a story about a time where a student and I had a runway incursion at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. And this is not a story I'm really proud of or anything, and I wish it hadn't happened, but I learned from it, and so I'm hoping by bringing you the story that you can learn from it too. In my crew resource management class, we have been talking about communication a lot and making assumptions when we communicate. And so this story really goes well with that. I did not take the time necessary to slow down and get full clarity from ATC on what they wanted our aircraft to do. And I also was unclear about exactly where we were supposed to taxi to. And so I wanna set this up for you and then we will watch a animation with audio that actually was recorded on the night that this happened back in 2004 when I was a brand new flight instructor. After it happened, we got the audio from it and then we were able to analyze it and I still have copy all these years later. So I have digitized it, I cleaned it up, I took out a bunch of the non-essential important non-essential parts of the recording to put it all together so that I can share it with you. So uh, before we get started with that, I also need to tell you that back then, back in 2004, when I was instructor, there was some differences with what a clearance allowed you to do. It's different now, but back then, if ATC cleared you to go to a point, that included a clearance across any runways that you might come upon while you were going to that point. Now, with this situation, that is the reason I told my student to continue taxiing. I did not understand where our aircraft was supposed to go. And when we came upon a runway, we thought I thought that we were cleared to go across that runway because I thought where we were going was still to come on the other side of that runway. Unfortunately, it was not. So let me also set this up to say it was a student and I, my student was a private multi-engine rated pilot. I was the flight instructor and we had a passenger in the back seat. It was one of his friends. We were flying a Duchess. The call sign was 650 Tango Hotel. This was at night. Neither my student nor I had ever been to DFW airport before, but we had to do a cross country into a class Bravo airport. Also, as we were departing our home airport of Longview, Texas, my student announced that he did not have a flashlight and I didn't have a flashlight, which was stupid. We did not have a backup flashlight. So we ended up using a runway diagram on a piece of paper and just the ambient lighting in the aircraft. The, I actually still have my runway diagram from that day, which is good, here it is, because DFW moved where the general aviation aircraft actually go between now and then. So I have the old diagram and that's what the animations are based on that we will watch together. And I will um, hopefully be able to explain along the way so you can see what happened. Hey there, guys. Round west. Man, I can hardly hear you. That zero tango hotel coming across the bridge is unfamiliar, do I? No. November 6th, Tango Hotel, where are you? I was in the room, it's 650 Tango Hotel. November 5th, Tango Hotel, going where? GA. Okay, who's Gulf and Gulf 11? Are you familiar with the area? I'm familiar. Okay, um, you're on Zulu now, you say? Affirmative. Okay, I'll make the left turn on Taxiway Gulf. And uh, once you get past the, uh, uh, this goes, I'll just give you further instructions shortly. It's about Gulf 11. Right now you're at uh, Zulu, about to come up on Gulf 5, the first taxiway where you'll find off your left. Uh, left on Gulf 11 for Dutch Hotel. Affirmative. Once you get there, left to the Gulf 11, that is GA, and you can get there via Gulf. Okay, left on Gulf 11, and then we'll get there via Gulf, Dutch Hotel. Jeff W. Zulu Bridge, back at level 5, Charlie Juliet, uh, North Hanger. What's the American local call sign? Charlie Juliet, for the North Hanger. Middle 5, Charlie Juliet, thank you. I've turned a short on 3 6 right, takes away Zulu. Short 3 6 right on the Zulu, local 5, Charlie Juliet. 
Zero Tango Hotel, you're not up the runway, are you now? Zero Tango Hotel, yes, we are. Now, hold short, sir. Zero Tango Hotel, we're across the runway now. Zero Tango Hotel, you're supposed to make a left turn to Texas Golf. Uh, that's Zero Tango Hotel, we thought you said Golf 11, sorry. Make a left turn at the next taxiway. That's on the next taxiway, that's your Tango Hotel. Zero Tango Hotel, I want you to make a left turn behind that jet off your left. You see him just off your left? Left turn behind the jet. Yes, sir, cross the runway right there behind that jet. Cross the runway behind the jet, that's your Zero Tango Hotel. And November Zero Tango Hotel, can you give me a full call sign? That's a 650 Zero Tango Hotel. Thanks. Um, when you get a chance, let us... Uh, We'll give this a call. We even need you to call the tower. We'll call tower. That's 650 Tango Hotel. Thank you. Remember 650 Tango Hotel. You have a pen so you can copy down a phone number. Remember that's 650 Tango Hotel. So that's the first part of the recording, which is hard for me to listen to. I hated that. It was super bad. The next part of the recording, I will let you listen to when I did the animations again, so you can hear what was being said on tower frequency, which my student and I were not on. We were on ground. So we didn't hear any of this until we later got the tapes and could hear what actually happened on tower frequency. So on this one, you will hear uh, aircraft, Eva Air. Uh, it was MD-11. It was cleared for takeoff, and then you will see what happens after that point, and then I'll come back to you with a few lessons learned after this. Eva, uh, 697 heavy, runway 36 right, clear for takeoff. Runway 36 right, clear for takeoff, Eva, 697 heavy. And flight 1915, left turn off, and uh, contact ground point 85. Ground point 85, ground point 1915. Eva, 697 heavy, abort, abort. Eva, 697 heavy, aborting. Starting on runway. That's fine, sir. Somebody crossed the runway downfield without permission. Okay, Eva 697, we are starting runway now. Okay, uh, you can turn either right or left off the run. Uh, actually, better make a right turn better. Right turn better. Okay, make a right turn first. Right, Eva 697, heavy. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. Contact ground on point eight five, and he'll get you back to the runway. Eva 697, heavy. So, some lessons learned. First of all, don't fly at night without a flashlight. Red light did not help me or my student to see the chart very well. Second, know where you're going, especially if you're unfamiliar, and know where the destination is, where you should be taxiing, and when controllers say taxiways, find them on the runway diagram, or if you have G1000 or other things like ForeFlight or Garmin Pilot, use Safe Taxi. Third, don't make assumptions, okay? Don't just say Roger if you don't understand. Clarify. I tried to clarify on the recording. You could probably hear that, but I still did not know where we were going definitively, and I told my student to go across the runway. So that was all really bad. But the good thing was, despite us giving a phone number from ATC, we did call it. We talked to the tower. When I got back home... I went to my manager the next day. We got the tower recording. We got ground recording. We talked with our FAA overseeing office. And the really cool thing was I learned two things on how to work with this. First of all, this is my really old uh, report that I filed on my NASA safety reporting form paper. Um, back then it was a copy of that. We had to mail the thing in. I got the return mail and everything. So I knew if anything had really bad come up to it and the FAA tried to come after me, filling out my NASA form gave me immunity. So if you do something and it's a mistake like that, please fill out the NASA safety reporting form. It improves aviation safety, helps you stay out of trouble. But secondly, we communicated with the FAA and they said, okay, there was confusion on the controller side too. It was not just you. And our inspector allowed me to complete a runway safety survey and do some other training. And so it was never put on my record at all. I never had any kind of violation or deviation or any kind of slip on the wrist at all from the FAA. So that was really good. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this type of video. Let me know in the comments what else you'd like to hear about. And thank you for watching Aviation 101 with Laura.